Um, just uh, let's see. Last time we were talking about limits involving infinity. Uh, today we'll finish talking about that. Uh, come to a conclusion of chapter two point six, and that will be the uh, material uh, for next week's class. Uh, are there any questions over the stuff we did yesterday that you'd like to ask before we move on? Where did we end up? Uh, I was right about here. I think that's what we ended with last time. Uh, we ended with the definition of the asymptotes, or the horizontal asymptote. Okay. So we ended with last time. Okay. Alright, so last time we talked a little bit about these uh, horizontal asymptotes. And a horizontal asymptote, again, is it, it's looking at sort of what the end behavior of a function is. It's looking at what happens on the tails of our function as we go out to very, very large values of x or very, very large values of negative x. So our horizontal asymptotes are looking at what is called the end behavior. say y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of f or m here, depending on which is the okay. So this is what our definition, our working <coughs> definition stuff for horizontal asymptote is. All right, that's what we got. You have to go around. Go around. There's a door out there. So, pretty straightforward in terms of horizontal asymptotes. I mean, this is really what we've been looking at uh, when we've been looking at these limits to infinity so far. Okay? Um, examples of functions like this, we've seen lots of examples of functions with horizontal asymptotes. Um, some of the simple ones that we can look at, we look at the function 3x plus 2 over x minus 1. Okay? When we look at this function, let's identify, does this function have any horizontal asymptotes? Okay. What happens to this function if I was to ignore what happens sort of in the middle and just focus on the ends of this graph? What happens out on the ends of this graph? Well, what do we do? We take our limit as x goes to infinity of our f of x. All right. What is that? It's the limit as x goes to infinity of 3x plus 2 over our x minus 1. Taking the limit here. How did we deal with these limits? What did we do? We had a couple of different things we could do. We went through the uh, we went through the method of working with this several times. Right? What did we do when we worked with this? What was the first step that we did? We pulled the x out. We pulled the x out of the top and out of the bottom, and we looked at what we had left over. Let's see. That gives us a x times three plus two over x divided by an x times 1 minus 1 over x. We can cancel out those two x's we move. Cancel these out. And now we're left with this new function, or this new expression to work with. Okay. Applying our limit properties, what's the limit of the top? As x gets very, very big, the top gets closer and closer to 3. What about the denominator? The denominator is getting closer and closer to 1. And so here, what we identify is that for this particular function, right, as we let x get very, very, very large, this function is getting closer and closer to the value 3. <coughs> that means that y equals 3, the function y equals 3, is a horizontal asymptote for this function. Okay. Now, this has only investigated what happens when we go to positive infinity. We can do the same analysis and look at what happens when we go to negative infinity. What we'll find is that this expression 
is still where we would end up. The limit as x goes to <coughs> minus infinity of 3 plus 2 over x, 1 minus 1 over x. We let x get really, really big in the negative sense. Again, the top part here still goes to 3. The bottom part still goes to 1. And so y equals 3 is a horizontal asymptote on the negative side as well. So in this, in, this, in this particular problem, our function f of x has horizontal asymptotes in both directions, both the positive x direction and the negative x direction. All right, let's take a look at one more. This is going to be a little different. y equals e to the negative, it's to the positive 1 over t. So, to the 1 over t. Now I want to find where this function has asymptotes. If it has a horizontal asymptote. Okay? Alright, so I'm finding a horizontal asymptote. That means I'm looking at what happens out on the ends of this function. Okay, so let's see what we get. Looking at the limit as x goes to positive infinity of e to the 1 over t. Looking at what's going on with this function when, and actually the t, is, t goes to infinity, not x. And so, yeah, what happens here? What's going on? As I let the t value get bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens to the value of this expression right here? Well, yeah, let's, let's try to figure out what's going on here. You're looking at the power up here and you're saying, okay, the, as t goes to infinity, 1 over t, what does this expression mean? You're right, this can be reinterpreted as the limit as t goes to infinity of the t root of e. Same expression. So the limit gets smaller than it gets to infinity. So it gets smaller. How small does it get? Exponentially smaller. Is it getting zero? Or zero? Putting it in this form may not be completely um, insightful as to what's going on here. Let's take a look back here and let's look at what's happening over here. Okay. Back over here, as t gets bigger, what happens to one over t? 1 over t is getting smaller. And in fact, as t goes to infinity, 1 over t gets closer and closer to 0. So in a sense, you can think of this limit as asking us what happens we do this limit as x goes to 0 of e to the x. Now, bear with me. Notice I changed the variables, right? I had a 1 over t over here. I have an x over here. Okay? But notice that I also changed where my limit's going. This is the limit as t goes to infinity. Well, as t goes to infinity, 1 over t goes to 0, right? That's all I've done here is I just replaced this 1 over t with something called x. And instead of looking at as t goes to infinity, I'm now looking at what happens as x gets closer to 0. The behavior of this is exactly the same as the behavior here, right? They're both doing the same thing. They're going the same direction. They're going to the same place, okay? When I write it in this second form, it's a little easier to see that this is getting closer and closer to the value. Okay? This is, in fact, the limit of this particular function. y equals 1 is a horizontal asymptote for this function. Is there another asymptote? This only looked at the positive infinity direction. What if we looked at going in the negative direction? Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay, the limit as x as t goes to minus infinity of e to the 1 over t. What's happening here? <coughs> What's going 
going on here? As t is getting closer and closer to minus infinity, what's happening to 1 over t? 1 over t, negative 1 over t. T over here, again, it's approaching 0, right? This is getting closer and closer to 0. But notice it's also getting closer and closer to 0 on the negative side, right? So it's approaching 0 from the left. So we can, again, rewrite this limit in a little bit different way. This is the limit as x goes to 0, approaching it from the negative side of e to the x. All right? But fortunately for us, e to the x, as x approaches 0 from either side, is going to the same spot. It's still going to one. Okay. So this particular function is getting um, closer and closer to 1 on the negative side as well. So it has a horizontal asymptote on both sides equal to 1. Not every function that has an asymptote is going to have the same, uh, an asymptote in each direction. Okay? And even sometimes when they do both have asymptotes in each direction, there's no guarantee that those asymptotes are going to be the same. Okay? So in the examples that we've seen, it has worked out that way. But not every function has that property. In fact, there's one last one. Uh, find the asymptote of y equals e to the x. Okay. See if this function has any asymptotes. We know what the function e to the x looks like. We know what it is. It's one of the exponential functions. You know, it, it has not lots of interesting properties that we'll look at. Um, but let's take a look at these limits. Let's take a look at the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x. And then let's also look at the limit as x goes to positive infinity of e to the x. What happens to each of these functions, to, to the end behavior of this function? Well, let's start with the top one. Limit as x goes to minus infinity. What's going on here? as we allow larger and larger negative values to be substituted in for x. What's happening to the x? As we put larger and larger values for um, x in, in the negative direction, this thing is getting smaller and smaller. Eventually, it's getting closer and closer to zero. Zero in this case. Because remember, in the negative direction, negative direction, when we put in negative values for the exponents, what are we getting? Negative exponents mean to do what? It means to take the reciprocal and raise it to the positive x power. So as the x's get larger and larger in the negative sense, right? We're looking at something like e to the negative 100. Well, that's the same thing as 1 over e to the 100. And then e to the negative 10,000. So that's 1 over e to the 10,000. Okay? The denominators here are getting very large very quickly. The top isn't changing. When I take a fixed number and divide it by things that are growing larger and larger, these values are all getting closer and closer to zero. And this limit is in fact going to zero as well. Okay? So exponential functions like this have horizontal asymptotes of y equals 0 in the negative x direction. What about the positive x direction? What happens to this function e to the x? Go ahead. What's the difference between what you just did and this over here? Magic. This over here, look at how the exponent is related. Okay. Look at where our limits are going. Okay. This is the limit as x gets close to 0. This is the limit as x goes to negative infinity. Okay? So this limit over here, and again, what we started with is we started with the function e to the 1 over t. Okay? This function has a very different behavior than this function over here. Does. Okay, so we have a horizontal asymptote in the negative direction. What about in the positive x direction? As I plug larger and larger values of x into e to the x, what happens to it? It gets bigger. Does it ever get close to any fixed number? 